Good morning. Good morning. Let's turn in our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Uh, if you will, silence your phones just for a little bit. Silence Amen. your phones. Amen. Amen. Or put them on vibrate or whatever. Okay. We'll start with prayer this morning. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for it is the first day of the week and our Savior is risen and we rejoice in that. And we are not focusing on... His death today, but in His resurrection. And thank you, God, for that. Bless us today. Help us to understand what is happening today. Help us absorb what's happened today, many years ago, and what it means to us. And we thank you so much for today. For in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Messiah, we do pray. And let all the people say, Amen. Amen. It's good to see everybody here today. I was thinking, come to church, saw all the cars, uh, cars here. It's like we have a mixed multitude, so to speak, as the Bible says. <laughs> So, um, I've charged the preachers today that, and one reason I wanted the pulpit out of the way so I can see, but also that we are servants today. We are not so much as delivering the Word of God today, but we are the servants today to you to help you participate in communion. Now, every time I have participated in communion in times past, except for when we do our Passovers, it has always been a very solemn event through the entire thing. And almost to the point in places I've been before, it was nothing more than a religious act. And I really don't mean any harm in that, but this is a very important thing, and we're going to see the importance through Scripture today. But today is very special. This is not to be a religious act. This is to be one of the two ordinances that the Lord charged the church to do is communion and baptism. So, first, we will be solemn in this, and we have to take this serious, because I'm going to go over scriptures that this is serious at this event. Yet, I believe that we are to celebrate communion. This is a joyous day, and in communion, we're to be very happy, and to be very appreciative for what Jesus, the Son of God, has done for us at Calvary. But today is not the focus of Calvary. Today is the focus of a risen Savior, which you should be rejoicing in. Because if He did nothing else for us, that we pass from death into life, it is enough. And in Passover, you'll see that. It is enough. You'll see that at times. It is enough. Now, I want to set the stage. The seven feasts of Israel is Passover. The day after is unleavened bread. Passover represents the religious new year. Feast of Trumpets is their civil new year. That's when their government and everything works. But Passover is the religious new year. Unleavened bread is the exact day after Passover, and it lasts for seven days. The first Sunday... During the seven days of unleavened bread is first fruits. Jesus Christ is the first fruits of the resurrection. That's the reason that we know there were three days. And I'll explain a little bit of that in a minute. And then you have Pentecost, which represents the giving of the Holy Spirit that we saw that day at the Temple Mount. And almost 3,000 people got saved that day. And it represents the uh, giving of the law because on the when Moses come down from the Ten Commandments God's accounting is perfect those that acted up 3,000 died so now we see death and today we see life 3,000 got saved at the day of Pentecost and then you have the Feast of Trumpets after that the Day of Atonement and then Feast of Tabernacles now yesterday was Passover so today is unleavened bread and first fruits. 
because this is the first Sunday during the Days of Unleavened Bread. Remember, Jesus died and rose again on first fruits because he's the first fruits of the resurrection, which points to the rapture of the church when we shall be resurrected in a moment in a twinkling of an eye at the last trump. That is the name for the Feast of Trumpets, not the trumps in Revelation, at the last trump. So, the fulfillment so far of these feasts, which point to the cycle of the entire seven millenniums of the church age, but what happens with Jesus is how he fulfills this is, Jesus dies on Passover, he's buried on unleavened bread, and when you see a, pa a Passover, they take this bread called the Afikoman and they hide it away. See, Jesus was hid away for, for a day, and then he rose again on first fruits. And then we see the giving again, we see the giving again of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost. So if these have all been fulfilled perfectly in their timing, what's the next event on God's calendar? Feast of Trumpets, resurrection, or the uh, resurrection of the dead, the rapture. It's a very important thing. And the reason that we need to understand this is I'm looking for the coming of Jesus and I'm not looking for the Antichrist. Amen. Amen. So, turn in your Bibles, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I want you to pay close attention. I'm going to point out a few words, and then we're going to get on with this service. But there is a charge to the church through this. It's going to give a brief outline that these men will explain. We're going to do three events today that they are going to demonstrate. One is the breaking of bread. And you'll understand why it is broken today and not pulled apart from a loaf that has leaven in it. The bread is broken, the same as Jesus Christ's body was broken. They will go over that. Then we will go over the wine. And then what he did after Passover, he sat down, laid aside his outer garment, and he washed their feet. It's a very important, very humbling thing. If you've never been in a foot washing, it's the greatest thing I've ever been through besides being saved and called to preach. It will, it will do things like fasting. I mean, it is amazing what will happen. So anyhow, we're going to begin in verse 23. I'll give you time to get there. 1 Corinthians 11.23. I'll pause for a moment. Make sure you read along because this is very, very important. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. Okay. For I have received of the Lord that which also I am delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. This is they are performing Passover in the upper room. And when he had given thanks, this is, this is important, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner, again, he says, a blessing before they partake of that cup of wine. And after the same manner, he took a cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it. And what does that say? Remembrance of me. 26, all right, this is the charge. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Now the Greek here, kat angelo, not just to show something, but the word behind it means to proclaim, to declare, preach, speak of and teach. We are to, to declare the Lord's death and His resurrection. Before I go any further, I'm going to give that poor child a moment. 
while she's calming him down, we had to change formula with Harden about five times, and right in the middle of the most serious part of the service, he would scream bloody murder to the top of the lungs, and everybody would jump around us. <laughs> yeah, so that's right. So, you know, youngins don't bother me. So, remember, as often as you do, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord, here's a word, unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. We should come to this place today on this special day and before communion judged. We know that where we stand between us and God, because without God, we are condemned to hell forever. But when you're born again, condemnation does not rest upon you. Amen. We should come before God, sins confessed, repented, and turned from. Not just sorry I got caught. That's a whole big deal. Teshuva. Teshuva in Hebrew means that you change from where the direction that you're heading and you turn from that sin, but you also head back to God. That is true repentance. 29. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. This is extremely important to me as a pastor to point this out. Because if I do not point this out, and you are not aware of these things, and you do this unworthily, then some of that's going to be on me. And that's not fair to you. People who love you will tell you the truth, whether it, you like it or not. Amen. Right. Right. Amen? For he, 29 again, For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. This is what happens when people do this. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. That means they're dead. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Amen. How true is that? But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord. The Lord will only chasten those who are His. Think about that. If you never get spanked from God from doing wrong, then you're not one of His. Amen. The Bible's right. very clear on that. Right. Right. Amen. There's a lot more Scripture on that. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. This is the reason that when we pass out the bread, when we pass out the wine, that you are to wait and we take this together. We're to take this at the same time. And he explains, if any man hunger, let him eat at home. Yes. This is not a place to come fill your belly at this time. Amen. Yeah. God. <laughs> that you come not together under condemnation and the rest will I set in order when I come. There were a lot of problems going on in the church of Corinth, and Paul has set this in order. Again, 26. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. And we need to proclaim that. Now listen. I do not want one soul or one person today to feel like that you should participate. You take this scripture, what I've said to you today, and if you feel like that you want to participate, you participate today. But if you don't, if you don't think you should or it's not right for you today, then don't. I want to be clear on that. No one will think anything of you. Matter of fact, God will think more of you if you do not participate when you don't think you should. But now you're going to have time before we get started to pray to God and get things right with God. So, this is real important. Now, there is cleansing in the blood, and there's power in His resurrection. We're going to pray again.
And we're going to pray, and I too am going to pray. We need to pray for confession and forsaken of sin before we come to the Lord's Supper table. Lord, we thank you again for today. God, if there be any sin that stand between you and us today, I pray, God, you take that out of the way. Make us a clean vessel. Lord, we know that you look upon us because of the blood of Jesus just as if we never sinned. And we thank you for what took place at Calvary, and dear God, and we rejoice in the resurrection of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you that we can rejoice and celebrate, dear God, Lord, what you have done for us in our lives and for our children, dear God, and for our family and friends, dear God, that we can walk through this in newness of life, dear God, Lord, that you will do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think as long as we trust in you. And thank you, God, for the peace that passeth all understanding. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. So now, <coughs> I've charged them. All the solemnness is away. This is a time to rejoice in the Lord. Whether you participate or not, I want you to understand what's going on, the depth, and they're all going to bring this in a timely fashion. And I promise you, you'll be blessed by this today. I'm excited about the events for today. Days we come with all humility. Thinking about the events that led up to the point of Jesus' crucifixion, I started thinking about the body of Christ Himself. And it goes all the way back into Isaiah chapter number 50 and verse number 6, where it says, I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. Isaiah 53, verse number 5, But he was wounded for our transgressions. My sins, your sins, Chris and Stuart's sins, he was wounded for us. Amen. It becomes a very personal thing when you set it in context. If it were not for my sins, he would not have had to have died. He said... But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Amen. Healed from the sin sickness that we were suffering before we came to that place and that day of repentance. We have before us the bread. As you can see, 
the darkness representing the bruising of the body. The stripes that goes down through here, the stripes that He received for us. The holes in the bread representing the piercing of His side. And when they planted the crown of thorns upon His head, we see today the bread as a representation of the body of Christ. John chapter 6 and verse number 35. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh after me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. John 6, 53 through 58. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, ye have no life in you. Whatso eateth, uh, whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and, drink, and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the Father liveth hath sent me, and I live by the Father. So, that, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is the bread which has come down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth this bread shall live forever. When you partake and you receive Jesus, you'll live forever. Some of the things that took place to the body of Christ, John 19 and verse number 1, then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged Him. Do you understand this? The taskmaster right there with his whip in hand. And he is sitting there and he is beating the Lord Jesus Christ. 19.2 And the soldiers planted a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe, the crown of thorns being plaited. Ken, put it on his head. Then at his death, where one of the soldiers where the spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water think of all he gave up for us what he had to endure even while on the cross Jesus told his disciples everything that was going to take place in the days that was yet to come and when he sat down with his disciples there in the upper room 11.24 of 1 Corinthians. And when he had given thanks, As Jesus would have said at Passover, which was done even Friday evening amongst all Jews and Israelis around the world, he would have said, he would have taken the bread in his hand, and he had said, Baruch Atah Adonai Elohino Melech HaOlam Hamatzi Lechem Min Ha'aretz. Blessed are you, the Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. Listen.
here in just a moment. Jesus said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. He made it personal for you. This do in remembrance of me. We're getting ready to pass the body now. Me and Chris? Two on this side and two on that side. <clears throat> so you take Ken. Yep. One on each side. One on the other. Here goes Stuart. If you would take that. Well, no, no, don't serve yourselves yet. Pass it on down. You need to go down this side right here. I have none. They're going to pass it okay. back and forth. Right. I understand that. Yeah, just, just walk down that side right there and they'll come back. In service, hold the plate for the person beside of you. As they pass this plate and you sit there, think about the body of Jesus and all of his suffering and what he's done for you. And be very, very thankful that he endured that for us. And again, 1 Corinthians chapter number 11 and verse number 24. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. I will ask, has everyone been served that would like to be served? Has anyone changed your mind? Okay. Take and eat. For this is my body. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Next more. Next more. Again, we read from 1 Corinthians. Rex has already read it, but we'll 
we'll actually read it twice, but verse 25, it says, After this manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as you drink, drink it in remembrance of me. And I'm going to read from Hebrews chapter number 9 and verse 19 if you wanted to get there. But while first I want to read from Luke 22, 20. Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. And reading from Hebrews 9, verse 19. I got to thinking about the blood. And on a normal Sunday, I try to really touch on the people that are lost. And I, whether you're here, whether you're tuning in or will tune in later, you need to listen to this about the blood here in Hebrews. This blood was shed. Verse 19, it says, For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the, the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled the blood, both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And this right here is a very important verse. Verse 22. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without the shedding of blood is no remission. The Bible teaches us over in Romans that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There had to be blood shed for me to be saved. There's nothing that I had to remit my sin. Thank God. Thank God. I don't have to drag something up to an altar. It was done. And if you read on and you study about this right here, Jesus was the perfect sacrifice in that He doesn't have to come year after year after year. Under the Old Testament economy, they had to do this every year. There was shedding. And I always look look at the shedding of the blood in the Old Testament economy as the animal was slain. It was sort of like sweeping the dirt up under the rug. You really not got it clean. <laughs> but glory to God. Amen. When Jesus came, Amen. it was done away with completely. His blood cleansed us. His blood completely remitted our sin. Every sin that ever had been, ever would be, or would come. That doesn't mean that I don't sin. That doesn't mean that if you are lost today that you won't sin. Yes, you should sin less. You should become a new creature. You should turn from the old ways. You should turn as Rex talked about. Really, to to repent means that you're going a different direction. But if you do sin and you believe on the blood of Jesus Christ and that He was the only begotten of the living Lord, the living God, thou shalt be saved. Let me read 22 again. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without the shedding of blood is no remission. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves 
with better sacrifice than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Let me, let me read that last part one more time. Now to appear in the presence of God for us. Jesus Christ is our advocate. Right. He's at the right hand of the Father making t- intercession for us. That's the reason when we say a prayer, it is important that we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let me tell you this, and I'll be brief. The word blood occurs 447 times in the King James Bible. In my studies, everything that I've ever read, if God repeated something, He's able to understand it and know about it. I believe He wants us to know about the blood. 447 times. The first mention is in Genesis 9, 4, well, there's actually a blood before that, but in Genesis 9, 4, we are told that the blood is the life. It says, but flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall you not eat. The blood is the life of an animal. If you take the blood, if you study that word out, if you take the blood from it, it dies. Matthew 26, 28 says, For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Because the blood is applied to me today, I live forever. We go back to 1 Corinthians eleven twenty five. 25. After the same manner, Also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. And as they would say on that day, and as they still do in Passover today, Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu, Melech HaOlam, Borei Peri HaGafen. Blessed is the Lord our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. And as they pass this out and you hold that little cup in your hand, please ponder on the blood of Christ. Be thankful, be rejoiceful in your heart for what He's done.
when he gets ready to get up, take that table, push it over against in front, okay? Teach from the floor, demonstrate from the platform. The way people can see. Luke twenty two twenty it says, Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. And from first Corinthians verse twenty five of chapter eleven, after this manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. I know I've walked back and forth uh, in the passing out of the, uh, of the bread and the wine, but uh, it's really good to see a full house. Amen. It's good to be in the presence of God's children in a place where we're all safe in His love. And that's really what this next part is about. Um, going all the way back to um, the book of Genesis, you find that if a person wanted to demonstrate hospitality, if they wanted to show that someone was welcome, if they wanted to show that person that they were safe within their home, uh, a traveler might come and they would be made welcome, but it would be provided for that they would have their feet washed. Amen. Now, foot washing is not about hygiene any more than the Lord's Supper is about nourishment of the body. Blessing God. Okay, it's the very same principle. If any traveler of old wanted to wash their feet, if they're able to walk all those miles, they're able also to find themselves a creek and wash their feet. So it's really not primarily about that. But it's about how we treat one another, how we esteem one another, how we encourage one another how we express our best wishes in the faith for one another. The scripture says in John's Gospel, chapter 13, Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that His hour was come, that He should depart out of this world unto the Father. Listen to this next part. Having loved His own, which were in the world, He loved them to the end. He loved them absolutely, perfectly, wholly. He loved them as much as it was possible for God Almighty to love anybody. He loved them. And the Bible says that the supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand and that he was come from God and went to God, he riseth from supper. 
and laid aside his garments. Now, I don't know if he was wearing a jacket. But uh, he laid aside. Thank you, brother. And I suppose if Jesus were wearing a tie, he would tuck it in at this point so that it would not be an issue. Oh, Teresa. I'll get it right. The pastor said it's supposed to be a joyous occasion. And the Bible says that he took a towel and girded himself. That's a whole lot of towel. I can tell you this, Jesus' towel was a little bit shorter. And mine will be by September. That's as nearly as I can get it. laid aside his garments, took a towel, and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin. And began to wash the disciples' feet. Now the taste of the wine and the taste of the bread, possibly the bitter herbs from supper and the haroset, it's all still in their mouth. It's part of their memory. They've experienced the retelling of God's great deliverance. And in the next day, they're going to experience the greatest deliverance that could be because the Son of God is going to die on the cross in their place and for their sins, and in your place, and in my place, and for your sins, and for my sins. It's all there in their minds. They've experienced it. Now Jesus is doing something for them that's wholly unexpected. Um, when John the Baptist looked at Jesus, he said, I'm not worthy to loosen his sandal. Um, and the one that John the Baptist could say that about is now bending down to wash the feet of those closest to him. And I have pondered all week the meaning of that. And I know that there's hospitality in it. I know there's acceptance and welcoming and encouragement. I know there's relief from the struggles of the journey that someone has been on. But I'm thinking that Jesus is also looking ahead to all the places they will walk and all the places where they're going to carry the gospel. And he's preparing them for it. And he'll have more to say about the meaning of this in a moment. I've asked Brother Blake to, to be my partner in this demonstration. According to Scripture, uh, when Jesus got to Peter, Peter wasn't the first one that he washed his feet. Uh, there's a line of them. Um, Peter said, I, I'm not worthy for this. Um, uh, I won't let you wash my feet. And what did Jesus say? If I don't wash your feet, you have no part with me. Peter said, well, not just but my feet, but my hands and my head. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is not about hygiene, and Jesus reminded him of that. In fact, these disciples almost certainly had uh, prepared themselves with a ritual bath before this Passover meal. And so this is about one person demonstrating kindness and grace and humility and acceptance and appreciation and honor to another. You see, 
Blake's success as a Christian is mine and yours. Uh, much in the same way that our children's success in life and their joy in life and their accomplishments, it's ours. And that's why grandkids are so precious to Amen. moms and dads. But that's another, that's another story. But uh, Jesus washed the disciples' feet. And the Bible says he dried them with the towel. So after, this is verse 12, he had washed their feet and taken his garments and was set down again. I'm going to continue standing, if that's okay, just for a moment. He said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Mm. Jesus is the Son of God. He outranks everybody who has ever lived or ever walked this world. And he humbled himself to take the form of a man, the scripture says, in coming to this world. And he humbled himself to walk among sinful creatures like you and like me. And he humbled himself to show his love and acceptance for his disciples. And he says that he has done something for us in the demonstration of washing the feet. Know you what I've done to you? You call me Master and Lord. And you say, well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. And I know it's not always literally about having a service like this. There are untold ways to show kindness, grace, hospitality, acceptance, love, appreciation, and humility, and all the things that you might see in this. There's all kinds of ways to show your wish for the spiritual growth and success of another person. But from time to time, just like we come to take communion and we remember the broken body and the shed blood of Jesus, from time to time, it is a good thing for a church to literally uh, act out Amen. in a visible way, Amen. using physical things, Amen. what Christ has demonstrated in this passage. I have given you an example, verse 15, that you should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. And here's the blessing, folks. If you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. I want to be happy. And I want to experience joy. And I want to experience God's perfect peace. And if this helps me to do that, I'm all for this. Amen? Amen. Amen. Join me for prayer. <laughs> Father, we bless your name. We thank you that you are good and your mercies endure. We thank you, God, for the privilege of participating in all this service. We thank you, God, for the washing of the feet. We thank you, God, for the example that you gave to us through your servant, the Lord Jesus. Help us, God, to live it, both in acting it out in this setting 
and before this world. And help us in so doing to bring many souls into the kingdom of God. And help us to see the growth and strength and the power of a church that's completely sold out to you in these last days. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This time with the Lord. <clears throat> As Brother Stuart mentioned where he said, if you know these things, happy are you. If you do these, if you do them. Happy in the Greek is the word called makarios. And it means supremely blessed. It can be translated happy, supremely blessed. And I always think about the old days when people used to come to church and not worry about stuff. And granny would take her bonnet and throw it in the air. And people yeah. would say, she got happy. That's because she was blessed. So, we're going to end on this note. I want everyone to bow their head, close their eyes, and just for a few minutes, ponder what you have seen today, what you have felt, and what you have participated in today. Let that speak to your heart today. And to be very thankful to the Lord for His body, for His blood, and for Him being that suffering servant that came and died on Calvary's cross for me and you, that He may rise again. Leave this place today joyous. But please ponder now for a few moments and speak to the Lord about what He has done for you. Before we pray, I want you to know two things today as you prayed and, and related to the Lord. I want you to know 100% whether that you are born again or not. You need to understand that in your life. The Bible says a man has to work out his own salvation. If you don't know that, we can help you through that. Yes. You need to know the day that you're born again. The other thing is you need to know where you stand between you and God. Amen. And you know, I had everybody... I believe it was last Sunday to write in the palm of their hand. How do you stand between you and God? One, not really good, probably uh, lost all the way up to ten. How's your relationship with God? And then everybody took the time and wrote in their hand. If you don't, if you can't write a ten in your hand, you need to fix something in your life. We don't need to be pious. We're not pious people. Uh, you can take that word and be pious in a certain way, but not in a negative way. We are to have a relationship with God. And this is how we're going to close today. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, give the pre priestly blessing upon you. I want you to be blessed today. And as we prayed in there today, and I want to speak the name of Jesus over you today. That really touches me. I want to speak the name of Jesus, that He is blessing you wherever you go today. And then we'll end after this prayer, and then you are at liberty to go. And... Uh, I have had a wonderful day in the Lord. I hope you have. It's been a, it's been a beautiful time. All right. <clears throat> let's, let's stand to our feet. We'll hold our hands out. Bow our head and close our eyes, and we shall give the blessing. Yevrechecha Adonai v'yishmarecha Yairananai panavi lecha v'kuneka Yesan and Apanavi Lecha Beyasim Lecha Shalom. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. 
The Lord lift up His counts upon thee and give thee shalom, that wonderful peace that passeth all understanding. And God, we reach out today, and Lord, that uh, we speak the name of Jesus over these people, the blessings that He gives in this life, the salvation that He gives, the sacrifice that was done once and for all, that all of our sins could be nailed to the cross. Lord, let us go out through this day understanding the great work that was done on Calvary. And Lord, we love you today and we thank you and let us be a people that will bind even tighter as times go by. Lord, no matter what.